federal government to arrange 76 hashtag and bad governance protesters on 10 count charges. Grant them 10 million naira bill each to minors. Bandits kidnap over 20 passengers in Niger State. Rivers NLC threatens strike over ruling on financial allocation. On the foreign team, Botswana opposition wins election in historic turnaround. Hello and welcome to Trust TV's news update. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for joining us. Now, detained 76 hashtag and bad governance protesters at the Federal High Court of Buja for the scheduled arraignment before Justice Obiari Guatun. They are facing a 10 count charge bordering on alleged treason, conspiracy to commit a felony with intent to destabilize Nigeria, which is contrary to Section 96 and punishable under Section 97 of the Penal Code Act. The protesters were mainly minors, looked malnourished as four of them were hurriedly rushed out of the courtroom as they couldn't stand on their feet. Looking very sickly, they wriggled in pain on the floor of the courtroom. All 76 of them were arrested and detained during the August 1 to 10 nationwide protest in the country, which was sparked by widespread economic hardship that led many Nigerians to take to the streets to express their grievances. The 76 protesters were arrested in Abuja, Kaduna, Gombe, Jos, Katuna, and Kanu, and are being accused of treason, among others. In the meantime, Justice Obio Raiguatu has granted bail to about 77 minors to the tune of 10 million naira each out of the 76 that were arraigned for participating in the August 2024 and bad governance protests. Those granted bill were below 15 years are expected to present one shorty who must be a civil servant. Meanwhile, another 687 who are adults are currently being arraigned on the same charges. children. The Federal High Court, sitting in Lagos on Friday, ordered the final forfeiture of the sum of $2.045 million, seven choice landed properties, and share certificates linked to the former. Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele. Justice Day, indeed, Dipo Olu ordered the permanent forfeiture of the monies and the two share certificates of Queenstorf Global Fund Limited Trust after holding that the former CBN governor or any other interested party did not contest them after the in initial interim forfeiture. The court also forfeited the seven choice landed properties on the ground that the former CBN governor, Emefiele, was not able to connect his lawful earnings from Zenit Bank and the Central Bank of Nigeria to the acquisition of the properties. The court held that the former CBN governor failed to provide documents or links to show that he owned the properties. Movina Boy State, the police command has paraded suspects involved in organ harvesting and ritual killings, among other crimes. While parading suspects at the state police headquarters in Abakaliki, the state capital, the police public relations officer, Joshua Okando, highlighted the successes recorded by the command. He noted that the command under the leadership of CP Antonio Uchanya has employed strategic steps through increased engagement with stakeholders to help bring crime to the barest minimum. He noted that the operatives of the command are not relenting in their efforts to ensure the safety and security of residents in the state. He stated that during the month under review, the command has arrested 177 suspects for various offences. No fewer than 20 passengers and five vehicles have been reportedly kidnapped on Mariga Kotungura Road in Niger State. The Speaker of the Niger State House of Assembly will also represent Manika constituency in the Assembly. Abdul Malik Sarikindaji made this known in a 
an interview with journalists in Mina. He said the incident happened on Thursday when bandits blocked the road between Bobalamba and Bidi. The speaker was reacting to the military refusal that bandits terrorists were not in his training ground in the Otungura local government area of the state, which also extends to the Mariga local government area. Salikin Deji said families of the kidnapped victims had taken ransom to bandits several times in the forest, which was part of the military ground. He also said the victims that were released after the ransom payments also told their families that they were kept in forests not far from the Kutungura army back. The speaker said the passengers that were kidnapped on Thursday on the road were also moved to the same forest, calling on the military to get the right information and flush out the bandits from the forest. The newly appointed acting chief of staff, Major General Olufemi Oluyede, on Friday assumed command as the first officer to be so appointed in that capacity in the history of the Nigerian army. President Bola on Wednesday appointed Oluyede as acting COAS pending when the substantive chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuarig Labaja, returns from medical leave. Labaja has been away on medical leave for about a month in an undisclosed hospital abroad and is set to be recuperating. In his remarks at the event, the Chief of Defence Staff, General Christopher Musa, described the appointment of Uluyede as an unusual happening in the history of the armed forces of Nigeria. Musa said taking over leadership of the army by an acting Chief of Army Staff was the first because of the unusual circumstances at the moment. The CDS said the appointment of Oluyede is in line with the provisions enshrined in the Armed Forces Act, Cap 820, the laws of the Federation, 2004, Part 7 Administration, Government and Command, Sections 18, Subsections 1 to 4. As the Minister of Power, Debayo Adilabu, says the federal government is exploring alternative power sources to serve as backups and to avoid future occurrence and collapse of the national grid. The minister made this known during an engagement with stakeholders and the management of the Kano Electricity Distribution Company, Ketco, in Kano State. The vandalization of uh, transmission lines has affected the entire northern states. If we have embedded power plants within particular regions or within a state or within a metropolis, and we can restrict the distribution infrastructure of that plant to the infrastructure of the disco, there will not be any major impact from any disturbance on the grid. And I'm happy that I have mentioned this to the government of Kano State, and they are also embracing this. The Zambara State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress, APC, said it has filed a suit at the Federal High Court in Guzo to challenge the illegality of the Zambara State Independent Electoral Commission, ZASIEC, over allegations that it contravened the law by not issuing the three-month notice to political parties regarding the conduct of the local council poll. Instead, it gave 30 days. The State Publicity Secretary of the APC, Yusuf Idris, disclosed this while briefing journalists in Guzo, the state capital, after a meeting of the state working committee. He argued that the 30 days would not be sufficient for political parties to sell the expression of interest and nomination forms, screen aspirants, conduct party primaries, entertain appeals or complaints, and organize and carry out campaigns to convince votes from the electorate. It was described the action as an attempt by the ruling People's Democratic Party, PDP, to deny candidates of other political parties their rights to participate in the local government election in Zamfara State. The Nigerian Labour Congress in River State has threatened to withdraw services over the court order stopping disbursement of financial allocations to the state. On Wednesday, a federal high court in Abuja restrained the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, from further disbursing financial allocations to the River State government. The court held that monies from the Federation account should not be released to the state pending the passage of a lawful appropriation act by a validly constituted House of Assembly. Speaking with journalists after an emergency meeting with Labour leaders in the state, Alex Awamo 
Rivers NLC chairman said the union condemns the judgment. He added, the judge did not take the citizens and workers of River State into consideration before issuing the ruling. Controversial social media personality and cross-dresser Idris Okuneye, also known as Bob Risky, who was rearrested on Thursday night, will face questioning over alleged bribery and corruption in Abuja. Now, according to an official from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Bob Risky would be flown to Abuja on Friday. Now, was flown to Abuja on Friday. It was earlier reported that the embattled cross-dresser was stopped and removed from an Amsterdam-bound KLM flight at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. He was detained by immigration officers late Thursday night while attempting to travel to London, United Kingdom. The popular cross-dresser posted on Instagram to alert followers about his arrest, claiming that he had sustained injuries during an altercation with immigration officers. A top source in the Antigraph agency on Friday said that Bob Brisky was apprehended to substantiate his claims against the EFCC. When contacted on Friday morning, EFCC's head of media and publicity, Dele Oyewale, confirmed Bob Risky's arrest, adding that Bob Risky is on his way to Abuja. The House of Representatives has expressed concerns over the life threatening state of the Sulejja Lombato Bido Road in Niger State and called for immediate action on the part of the Federal Ministry of Works and the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FERMA. The House urged the federal agencies to immediately deploy resources to complement the efforts of Niger State government, which has so far constituted a task force to alleviate the situation and restore the free flow of traffic. This followed the resolution at plenary arising from a motion of urgent public importance sponsored by the DEN by 10 lawmakers from Niger State led by Seydou Musa Abdullahi. The House wants the Ministry of Works to conduct an emergency assessment of the condition of the road and engage the contractor handling the project to ascertain reasons for delay in execution in a bid to prefer long-term solutions to prevent future occurrences. They also want the ministry to collaborate with relevant stakeholders including Niger State government, security agencies and transport unions to ensure sustained effective traffic management. The current situation has resulted in huge losses in valuable manhours, impacted negatively on perishable goods, especially agricultural produce, posing severe implications on the economy of the nation and also, has also heightened the risk of accident and has made the area prone to criminal activities, thereby compromising the safety of commuters and residents alike. Also worried that road users have been subjected to hunger, poor health condition and untold hardship due to their inability to assess quality food, health care and transport, and transport themselves and goods effectively. Disturbed that reports from credible sources indicated that a corpse was discovered ab abandoned along this alternative route yesterday. Also disturbed that ugly situation poses, this ugly situation poses a serious threat to national security and the well-being of Nigerian citizens. I acknowledge that the federal government awarded the contract for the reconstruction and dualization of the first phase of the, this vital road since 2010. The Burundi state government has reiterated its commitment to reduce the rate of out-of-school children and provide access to education to children displaced by the flood. The Commissioner for Information and Internal Security, Usman Tar, stated this during an official visit of Street Ch Child Organization for an Education Intervention Project for Flawed Displaced Children and was affected by the insurgency conflict. Tar said the state government has put in place policies and programs to address out of school and homeless children and is willing to partner with stakeholders to stem the rising number of out of school children. The project invested in four African countries and worth $12.5 million, targets 42,000 children in Bruno in the areas of education, psychosocial support, care, and de-radicalization. Today, Nigeria has one of the highest rates of malnutrition in sub-Saharan Africa, affecting children, affecting adolescents, affecting adults alike. It's a crisis that requires bold, immediate action 
and sustainable long-term solutions. Malnutrition, in particular, has devastating effects on the most vulnerable members of our society, especially children. Lack of proper nutrition during the critical stages of growth is known as physical and cognitive development, setting a trajectory of reduced academic achievement, lower earning potential, and increased subsistence to health issues. The impact of these disasters on the nutritional well-being of our populace cannot be overstated. Given these challenges and the urgency that they demand, it is imperative that we unite to address the underlying causes of malnutrition and food insecurity in our country. This national summit will present a pivotal opportunity for us to not only assess the current state of nutrition and food security in Nigeria, but also to craft comprehensive strategies and policies that will safeguard the well-being of our citizens, particularly our vulnerable children, from a legislative standpoint. The Borno State Government has reiterated its commitment to reduce the rate of out-of-school children and provide access to education to children displaced by the flood. The Commissioner for Information and Internal Security, Usman Tar, stated this during an official visit of Street Child Organization for an Education Intervention Project for flawed displaced children and those affected by the insurgency conflict. Tar said the state government has put in place policies and programs to address out of school children and homeless children and is willing to partner with stakeholders to stem the rising number of out of school children. The project invested in four African countries and worth $12.5 million targets for the 2,000 children in Bruno in the areas of education, psychosocial support, care, and de-radicalization. We are happy that uh, we have our partners, in this case, the student children, international, they are here to support us on the mission of how to what they had. I can see that they want to speak of the enrollment. They also want to continue the issue of de radicalization. Catching children young before they get de radicalized by insurgents and by terrorist organizations. These are many more areas of the interested in as a government to have that. But I know there are more than 500,000 children who are out of school and who need care, who want to be safe, who want education. And uh, we're here to help and to try and learn something about uh, their different needs in what is a very challenging context. Uh, I've heard about the floods in September and the, uh, the damage that the floods caused. I know about the insurgency and how that has interrupted the education of many of the children. In business, the Nigerian Port Authority NPA said that seven ships were berthed with crude oil on Friday at the Lagos ports. The NPA in a statement said that seven vessels were berthed diesel, crude oils, ball courier, patrol and aviation fuel, while two other vessels were berthed with containers carrying different goods. According to NPA, the nine expected vessels were berthed at CIFAX, ENL Consortium Terminals, Papa Bulk Terminal, among other terminals in Lagos. The NPA said the total that a total of two vessels were waiting to berth at Apapa and Tinkan Island ports with ball courier and aviation fuel. It added that three vessels were currently discharging general cargo, patrol, and container at Lekki Deep Seaport in Lagos. The United World Congress of Diplomats has appointed by also states UEFA Aganaba as African Special Envoy on Youth to the African Continent. The international organization with headquarters in London announced the appointment in a letter by its Global Vice President and Secretary of the Supreme Council, United World Congress of Diplomats, Ambassador Tunji John Asaolu. The appointment letter, dated October 16, 2024, was officially handed over to Aganaba in Abuja on Wednesday. Prince Iwefa Ganaba, who is currently the Commonwealth Youth Ambassador, will as Africa's Special Envoy on Youth play a vital role in promoting youth development across five regions of Africa. 
United World Congress of Diplomats brings together the world's diplomats to foster harmony amongst nations in pursuit of global peace and development. It provides quality mediation and intervention across nations to enhance world peace. Away from Nigeria, Botswana's opposition's umbrella for democratic change, UDC, has won a majority in parliament and can form the next government. The Electoral Commission announced Friday, marking a historic defeat for the party that had governed the diamond-rich country for nearly six decades. Outgoing President Mokwitsi Mazisi considered defeat in Wednesday's general election and said his administration will begin handing over the reins of government in the next few days. Independent Electoral Commission spokesperson Usupile Maroba, the UDC, said that the UDC has reached the minimum requirement to be declared the next government. The UDC needed 31 seats out of the 61 to govern alone, and its results combined with those of two other opposition parties had already reached that target earlier today. In sports, Super Eagles caretaker coach Augustin Aguavon has praised the quality of local base players invited for the 2025 African Nations Championship qualifier against Ghana. Aguavon last week invited 35 players to come for the encounter against Black Galaxies. The team started preparations for the game in Abuja on Wednesday. The highly impressed Aguavon praised the players for their technical ability. The team will regroup next week after the players left for the for their respective clubs to take part in this weekend's Nigeria Premier Football League NPFL games. And that's it for news updates at this time. For more of our news programs and documentaries, do all the follow us on our social media platform and on our YouTube live stream. I am Chiamaka Wafo. Thank you for watching. Good evening.